Greetings, Baba Batu Shakori. Welcome back for another episode. Yes, sir. Good to be back and good to be in the uh, uh, putting in some information and putting putting in some work because this is work. Absolutely. I appreciate your presence and taking out this time out of your day. Um, today, we're going to get into some heavy discussion and we want to also make sure that we recognize um, our esteemed ancestor, um, Malcolm X Shabazz, mm -hmm. better known as Omawale. Yes, sir. So I'm going to give you the floor and let you go. All right then, brother. Yeah, um, this is a very, very uh, important subject. And uh, we're going to be approaching it from the perspective of our liberation struggle. You know, this is very important because this, this great ancestor did some great work in the African world. It's no question about that. No question whatsoever. And, and there, there's also no question that this uh, great elder was a hero of mine. It's no question about that. No question. Um, one of the things that happens with African people that really uh, contributes to our destruction as a people is that we have this tendency to try to deify individuals and then transform them into sacred cows where we cannot say anything uh, uh, that any of us consider to be negative about them. You know, I try to remind African people all the time that the African world is suffering and dying because of our negatives. It's not because of our positives. The African world, what happened to us in ancient Egypt? All of those happen, all of those things happen to us because of our negatives. We were doing some things fundamentally wrong, a great deal of things fundamentally wrong. And most of the things that we were doing wrong were products of how we had been miseducated and misled by our leaders. That's how the great ancient Kemet, also known as Egypt, fell into total ruin. And all of this has been well documented in history. So this is the same thing that we have to look at today. We have to understand that misleadership and miseducation are critical components of how nations fall into total ruin and how they are kept in a state of ruin. So again, when we talk about our dear elder, I mean, our dear uh, uh, ancestor, Malcolm X, Omawali, El Haj Malik Shabazz, when we talk about this great elder, I mean, this great ancestor, again, great ancestor, we have to look at both the positives and the negatives. We have to. Because we're not going to get out of our circumstance and condition in the world just simply looking at the positive things that we've done. You know, many of us don't even want to hear anything about the negatives that we've done. And this, again, is keeping us in our perpetual state of foreign dominance. So when we talk about Malcolm X, Omar Wiley, El Haj Malik, Shabazz, we have to talk about both sides of this great ancestor. You know, 
I read uh, the autobiography of Malcolm X many, many, many years ago, many years ago. I think the first time I read that book was uh, back in the early, early 70s, you know, shortly after I had become involved with uh, the Black People's Topographical Research Center that existed at that time. So I took the time to read uh, that book and I was disappointed. I mean, I had already known that he had done great things and I've read the parts, the parts of the book where he, where he elaborated on some of the good and wonderful things that he did for the African world. And again, I have to stress that Malcolm did some great things for the African world and put out some great information. It's no question about that. But again, we have to also look at the other side. Where was Malcolm leading us to? What direction was he taking us in? Now we know that when he started, when he connected himself with the nation of Islam, um, and the nation of Islam at that time was on the page of uh, separation and independence for African people, that this is what we need. That is still what we need today. That hasn't changed. African people need to recover our freedom and independence. In fact, liberation, for African people means us fully recovering our total freedom and independence from all foreign dominance. It is not about us simply uh, choosing between one foreign uh, enemy conqueror for another foreign enemy conqueror and enslaver. And see, this is what happened to us. Instead of us staying on the path of seeking freedom and independence from our enemies, we started deviating into trying to figure out ways and means that we could choose between enslavers. So this is what happened relative to us starting to uh, step away from Christianity and then uh, take the path of Islam. Not paying attention to the fact that Christianity and Islam are rocking in the same boat relative to African people. And that holds true for Judaism as well. All three of those religions the Europeans, Christianity, the Arabs, Islam, and the Jews, Judaism, are foreign enemy religions that have been used by the people who created them to enslave our people, conquer our land, and destroy our civilization and culture throughout the world. This is what all three of those religions have done to us as a people and are continuing to do to us as a people, even unto this day. Now we like to talk about Malcolm and the great things that he did. We like to talk about how he talked about nationalism and the need for us to unite and all of these other great things. And all of those things are great and important and necessary. It's no question about that. But see, we've got to take stock of the fact that liberation for a nation of people means total freedom and independence from all foreign dominance. That Sorry. means political, economic, intellectual, spiritual. In fact, let me say that again. Spiritual. You cannot be under another people's spiritual dominance. And then talk about how you are uh, uh, free and independent and you're on the path of liberation for African people. No, well, it don't work like that. Let me, yes, cut, let me ask you a quick question. Sorry to uh -huh. interrupt. On uh, uh -huh. the question of uh, leaving your religion at home, you mm -hmm. know, this, uh, Malcolm 
said that in one of his great speeches. You know, we leave oh, yeah. our at home and we move toward black nationalism. Right. This idea that just because we're all black, we can be Muslim, Christian, Hebrew, whatever, but we come together under a point of unity under nationalism. Could you speak on his message to us regarding nationalism and what you think yourself, based on your research and the evidence that we see around us, where mm -hmm. does that path lead us to? Mm -hmm. Well, he, you know, this is one of the things he did say. And I, and, uh, and I, and I remember that uh, piece. Uh, that he put out there relative to, you know, we need to leave our religion at home, but we're not oppressed because we're Christians or Jews or Hebrews. We're, we're oppressed because we're black. So we need to leave uh, uh, our religion at home and just go forward. Well, that's a problem because again, you have to go back to what liberation means. Liberation means freedom and independence from all foreign dominance be it political, economic, intellectual, spiritual, technological, military, or otherwise. Liberation means liberation. So that means you and I are not going to achieve freedom and independence. And then at the same time, continue to hold on to the very weapons that are being used against us to keep us from achieving our freedom and independence from other people's dominance. Christianity, Islam, and Judaism are all foreign enemy religions, and they keep us divided against each other. We need to embrace our own spiritual principles and practices. The great spiritual uh, principles of Ankh-Rec, life science, that was developed by our ancestors in ancient Kemet thousands of years before Christianity, Islam, or Judaism was even a thought. We have our own spiritual principles and practices. Oh, yes, there are aspects of our uh, spiritual principles and practices that certainly need to be recognized for the negatives that they are. And because these spiritual principles and practices belong to us, it is our responsibility to rid ourselves of that nonsense. But that, that same reality exists in Christianity, Islam, and Judaism as well. There's plenty of nonsense in those religious uh, 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 doctrines. So that's nothing new. African people are making a tragic mistake, embracing the religions of our enemies. Reason being is because a people's spiritual system is that system that informs them of who the one creator is, what their relationship is to the one creator, and what their responsibilities are in life to themselves. These are critical, critical aspects of what a people's religion does for them. Critically important that religions do for a people, critically important is that religion uh, serves to define for a people what their sense of right and wrong is. So see, religion is not something that a people can take lightly, nor is it something that's interchangeable with another people's religious doctrine. Oh no, you can't do that and think that you're gonna have a good outcome. A people's religion evolves out of their own historical experience. It also evolves out of their sense of what is in their own collective best interest. When you find a nation of people who are taking on the religion of another people, what it means is they're embracing 
another people's doctrine that is defining for them who the one creator is, what their relationship is to the one creator, and how they are defining what's right or wrong for them. This is a horrible thing for any nation of people to do. Because again, a people's spiritual doctrine must be a reflection of their own historical experience and must support those things that are in their own collective best interests. This is what we're failing to do as a people. We're, like you said in the past presentation, we're all over the map. We've decided we're gonna become we're gonna become Christians. We're gonna become Hebrews. We're gonna become uh, 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 Muslims. We're gonna become a little bit of everybody. And then to add insult to injury, because all of these religions—Christianity, Islam, and Judaism in particular—all of these religions have contributed to the death and destruction of the African world. All three of them and is well documented. Don't take my word for it. Read the documents, read the history of all three of these religions and read it in relationship to how it has been applied to destroying African people. You actually answer the next question I was going to, which is, uh, do you see religious thought or religious thinking, rel religious religiosity, if that is such a word, do you see that stagnating our political development and even our intellectual growth? Oh, absolutely. It's no question about it. It's no question about it. But it's not, see, it's not religion itself that is doing these things. It's the fact that you and I African people have embraced religious doctrines that are out of sync with what's in our collective best interest as a people. We have embraced foreign religious doctrines that are actually teaching us things that goes contrary to our own collective best interests. So this is where you have situations like, I'm just gonna use some examples, quick examples. In Christianity, they teach us that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. I can rattle on and on and on about the a multitude of negative things that's taught in Christianity. But that's one of the biggest, that's one of the biggest horrible, suicidal uh, uh, teachings that comes out of that doctrine. Here you have a situation where you have a nation of people who are believing that a dead man is their savior. And that all we have to do is sit back and believe in this dead man and uh, uh, we'll be saved. We don't have to worry about uniting among ourselves, organizing ourselves, working with each other, building our own modern and independent civilization and culture. We don't have to worry about becoming independent producers of the things that we use in life. We don't have to worry about becoming skilled fighters in all areas of modern combat and warfare. We don't have to worry about none of that. All we have to do is believe in Jesus and Jesus has got everything uh, uh, un under control, okay? This is total nonsense. That's suicidal. That leads to the destruction of nations and we are living proof of it. Then you talk about Islam. Here's a situation uh, 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 where uh, we're being taught that um, Islam is, 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 the per is the perfect religion. This is, this, this is supposed to be the perfect religion and, 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 and it's gonna solve all of our problems. And then from that, we, we black people, specifically uh, I I Elijah Muhammad, comes up with this idea that there's a mothership out there somewhere and this mothership is gonna come back and solve all of our problems and drop some bombs and it's gonna go down into the earth and explode. And when all of the dust settles, the only one that's gonna be left is the righteous Muslims of the world. Come on now, come on now. 
come on now. And you want to tell me that we can walk around believing in nonsense like this and everything is going to be fine for us? Oh, no. It's not going to be fine for you at all. Because the ones who are teaching us this stuff, the, the Europeans, the Arabs, and the Jews, they don't believe in none of that nonsense. That's for their victims. That's for their victims. That's how they rule. Because as long as any religion, and I don't care if it's a foreign religion or even if it's our own religion, any religion that disconnects a people from reality is a deadly religion. And I don't give a crap who it comes from, even if it's your own religion that's teaching you nonsense that disconnects you from open and obvious reality. And you see, that's what's happening with African people. This is I'm Rick. I just want to put this in right quick, quick. Well, I'm sorry. I'm Rick. Ankh Rek, life science, which was developed by our African ancestors in ancient Kemet thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago. It teaches us that it is our responsibility to provide for ourselves, protect ourselves, and establish and maintain our own civilization and culture. That's what Ankh Rek teaches us. It, it teaches us that it is a fool who thinks that someone else is going to provide for them and protect them against things that are things in life that are going to do them that are doing them harm. This is foolishness. We have decided that, well, no, nah, I'm not going with that. I like the idea that I can hang my hat on a Jesus coming back to save me or a mothership coming back to save me or some uh, 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 Messiah is coming at some point in the unknown future. He's going to come back and save me. No, you get the hell out of here. Our ancestors taught us that we are our one and only savior. And that truth, us not only knowing the truth, but acting on the truth is our one and only salvation. So we are our only saviors and knowing and acting on the truth is our one and only salvation. And for us to do that, we've got to do all of the things are necessary for people to be an effective nation. We've got to love ourselves unite among ourselves, properly govern ourselves, become independent producers of the things that we use in life. We got to be providers for ourselves. We've got to be protectors of ourselves, builders of our own civilization and culture, and protectors and maintainers of that civilization and culture. So these are the things that religion can destroy easily. Because what happens is religion has a tendency to play upon people's beliefs. It has a tendency to cause people to take positions that are based strictly on belief. And many times people will ignore reality so that they can stay in line with their beliefs. This is a horrible thing for nations to do. We shouldn't be going through life basing our actions on our beliefs. Oh, no. We have to go through life basing our actions on things that we know, things that we can confirm to be true through our own observation. This is what's got to be going on within the African world for us to get out of the hell hole and the death trap that we're in in the world today yeah um, brother i'm gonna um shoot one more question um, okay brother for time's sake you made it very clear abundantly clear that we should dismiss these notions of religion no matter where they come from in regards to our liberation struggles 
how about the ideals of black nationalism and us uniting to gain some power or some strength in this society in regards to the into um, North America? Because if we take away the religious aspects of Malcolm's teaching, there's still the black nationalism that a lot of people still hold on to uh, basically with this belief, um, as he said, you know, we can own our own stores, own our own businesses, and then do the political thing. You know, we want to go to the United Nations and charge, you know, uh, human rights violations and mm -hmm. all that. Touch on those aspects for us, if you will. Well, you know, the bottom line is us uh, getting, getting, um, establishing businesses and chasing after white boy money and getting us a big fat bank account and all the rest of these things, none of that equals freedom and independence for nations. See, none of that is going to uh, make that happen for us. Freedom and independence, again, and I have to repeat it, it means a nation of people achieving total freedom and independence, liberation, from all foreign dominance. That's what that means. So when we talk about us establishing our own culture and our own civilization and our own nation, religion is a critical part of us being able to do that. All of us have to be on the same page of what's right and wrong for us as a nation of people. We can't go through life thinking that we're going to establish a functional, fully functional and, 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 and dynamic and, and healthy civilization and culture. And your and my sense of right and wrong relative to those things that's going to keep our civilization and culture alive, your and my, sen my, your and my sense of right and wrong is worlds apart from each other or out of sync with the reality of how life operates. Don't no dead man come back from nowhere and save nobody, okay? This guy, Jesus, couldn't even save himself. He was crucified, you know? So we have to be clear about these things. We have to be clear about how religion and everything else fits in to the building and maintenance of a functional civilization and culture, okay? Religion is a part of, you can't discard it. You can't say, well, you know, I tell you what, you know, we all divided relative to religions and I got my beliefs and you got your beliefs. So you know what we're going to do? We just going to toss that aside. And I tell you what, what we're going to do from now on, we just ain't going to have no religion. We just going to throw religion out the window and then we just going to go without religion. Well, I will not wait a minute, hold it. That's a problem. That's a problem because, again, religion has to do with you understanding who the one creator is, what your relationship is to the one creator. It has to do with your sense, again, of right and wrong. So if we toss out our sense of right and wrong and everybody just going to basically do their own thing, well, now you got chaos again. We have got to understand social anatomy. Social anatomy is the scientific study of the structure and functioning of nations. Once we understand how nations are structured and function, then we can begin to identify those parts of our uh, uh, nation. We can begin to identify those parts of our nation that are dysfunctional. And then we can start correcting those things, okay? We don't need to... Uh, 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 discard none of the aspects of a people's religion, their language, social organization, government, law, familyhood, police, military, education, medicine, religion, technology, and criminal justice. All of those things are parts of a people's culture. They are a part of the things that make it possible for nations to have a functioning and healthy civilization and culture. So no such thing as us getting rid of religion. Oh no, we've got to clean our religion up. We've got to toss out these foreign religions that is not only dividing us and confusing us, but they're also destroying us. 
We don't need that. We have enough work. Hear me well on this. We have enough work to do to clean up our own spiritual teachings and practices. We don't need to be fiddle faddling around uh, dealing with foreign enemy religions that have been used to destroy us. I'm not wasting my time trying to clean up Christianity, clean up Islam, clean up Judaism. It ain't mine to clean up. That's their stuff. What we need to do is clean up our own house. Clean up your own house, black man, black woman, black child. Clean up your own house. And then you'll see the change that needs to be made throughout the African world. I appreciate yes, that, definitely. Um, and I would even say in regards to cleaning up ourselves uh, individually and collectively. Yes, sir. That focus, be our guide and be our path. So that's what Malcolm was really trying to show us. And I think it uh, should be more of a conversation as well of us not trying to clean up America. Like this is not our place to try and fix and make good for us. Um, we can get right. into that at another time, but I definitely appreciate you expounding in the areas that you did. And I hope that um, someone takes something away that they're going to apply to life. And as you always say, your, uh, your, 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 your famous quote of mine, uh, your, my famous quote of yours, I'm sorry, is that uh, this is straight with no chaser. Straight Everybody with no chaser. Everybody's not able to deal with information when you give it to them straight with no chaser. But mm -hmm. it's necessary. It's important. We mm -hmm. should be able to uh, take the information and use it. Use it for what it's intended for, which is to help us grow and move forward. So thank you again. Yes, sir, brother. And I again, I appreciate it. And like you said on that last note about us uh, cleaning up, the cleanup work that really needs to be done in the African world is us cleaning up our continental African homeland. Because ultimately, that's our root. That's the epicenter for the entire African world. That's it. All right, for time's sake, we're going to end right here. I'll say unity. Unity, brother.